fact that she's comfortable flaunting all these relationships around all of us. She's different. I just want to feel joy in my life. to anyone else. An affluent husband becomes the prime suspect in the disappearance of his wife's lovers. After his morning workout, Vic finds his wife Melinda staring at him before she heads upstairs and he goes to a different room. Later, their daughter Trixie plays a nursery rhyme, which annoys Melinda. When the babysitter arrives, Melinda orders Trixie to turn off the music. Despite this, Trixie plays the song again, knowing it drives her mother crazy. Upstairs, Melinda asks Vic for his opinion on what to wear for the soiree, and he tells her she looks beautiful in what she's already wearing. As he helps her put on her heels, she tells him she loves him, but he doesn't respond in kind. At the soiree, the couple shares with their friends that they let Trixie decide to enroll in a public school. When asked about college competition, Vic says Trixie is brilliant and believes sending her to college is the worst thing they could do. Later, Vic observes Melinda greeting a young man named Joel. He follows them and finds them making out outside. Melinda stops when she notices Vic watching. A concerned friend, Mary, approaches Vic, noting how quickly Melinda and Joel got together. Melinda then invites Vic to dance, but he declines, not wanting to ruin her evening, so she leaves with Joel. Mary tells Vic that Joel was invited at Melinda's request and wonders if they are intimate, but Vic isn't concerned. Later, Vic finds a drunk Melinda playing the piano. Vic watches her fondly. Afterwards, Joel approaches Vic and calls him nice for allowing him to see his wife. Vic is offended by this comment, but Joel continues, saying most husbands would have been jealous. Angered, Vic brings up Martin McRae, who disappeared recently, hinting that he killed Martin because he dated Melinda. Joel becomes concerned, thinking Vic's joke is in poor taste, but Vic clarifies he wasn't friends with Martin. Alarmed, Joel insists he doesn't believe him, but Vic dismisses his concerns. Suddenly, Melinda sees Joel storming off. On the way home, Melinda asks Vic what he and Joel talked about, but he dodges the question. She believes he said something to upset Joel, as he seemed different after their conversation. When they arrive home, Vic pays the babysitter, while Melinda starts undressing and heads to the kitchen. Seeing this, Vic blocks her view from the babysitter, angering Melinda, who hurries to the bedroom. In bed, Vic helps Melinda change clothes and comments that she should have chosen someone intelligent. Melinda reveals that despite Joel being dumb, he allows her to enjoy herself, which excites her. Hearing this, Vic starts touching his wife, but Melinda just tells him to close the door on his way out. Deep in thought, Vic finds solace in his snail farm. The next day, Trixie works on her science experiment, and Melinda comments that she'll be like her father, who builds bombs. Trixie defends Vic, saying he doesn't make bombs but computer chips. After Vic sends Trixie to school, a neighbor named Kristen greets him and jokes that he should have called her to cover up for murdering Martin. Vic clarifies that it was just a joke, and Kristen says she hopes so, since the rumor has spread but has at least scared off Melinda's suitor. At lunch, his friends Jonas and Grant comment on the rumor. Concerned, Grant advises Vic to rein in Melinda because she's been flaunting her lovers to everyone. Back home, Melinda confronts Vic about threatening Joel, crying that Martin was her friend and he shouldn't joke about him. Vic apologizes, but she demands he also apologize to Joel, whom she's inviting to dinner on Friday. Dreading the day, Vic reluctantly agrees. On Friday, Joel arrives, but Vic claims it will just be the two of them. Joel becomes worried until Vic clarifies he was joking. Trixie asks who Joel is, so Vic introduces him as her mother's friend, like Martin McRae. Joel shares that he's got a job in New Mexico and will be leaving town. Vic then declares it's Joel's last supper and that he'll cook lobster bisque. However, Joel mentions he's allergic to shellfish. At dinner, while the adults talk, Trixie watches Joel with glaring eyes. Since Joel is allergic to lobster bisque, Vic makes him grilled cheese. Melinda grabs a piece, claiming she doesn't like lobster bisque, and praises Vic's grilled cheese. Vic teases that she has the appetite of a 12-year-old, recalling how he took her to the best restaurant only for her to order mac and cheese. Melinda thinks Vic was ashamed of her, but Vic reminds her that she ordered from the children's menu to save room for alcohol. Melinda remarks that Vic isn't normal because he can't let things go. 
Vic counters that if he were normal, he wouldn't be having dinner with her lover. Feeling uneasy, Joel excuses himself to the restroom. Suddenly, Melinda tells Trixie to go to bed and asks Vic to read her a bedtime story, surprising him. Before falling asleep, Trixie asks Vic why her mother acts differently around other people. Vic replies that it's just her nature, but this confuses Trixie. She also confides that she doesn't like Joel. Later, Vic sees Melinda enjoying Joel's company. Frustrated, he goes to the kitchen and intentionally drops a plate to interrupt them. Melinda checks on him and insists she'll do the dishes in the morning, making it clear she wants him to leave so she can be with Joel. She pours Joel a drink and asks Vic to give it to him as she steps out. Alone with Vic, Joel asks if he'll apologize for threatening him. Vic refuses and asserts that he did kill Martin McRae with a hammer, frightening Joel. Suddenly, Vic announces that Joel's Uber is here. When Joel says he didn't order one, Vic clarifies that he did, forcing Joel to leave. At another party, the family meets noir writer Don Wilson and his young wife Kelly. When asked about his work, Vic reveals that he's retired, and Melinda adds that it's because he invented a computer chip used in warfare. Don comments that it's unethical, but Vic responds that he only made the chip. Concerned, Don points out that drones are used to kill innocent people. Vic, on the other hand, believes the chip could be used to send food to starving children, but Don disagrees. Later, Vic surprises everyone by inviting Kelly to dance, as he usually doesn't dance at parties. On the way home, Melinda comments that Vic seemed to enjoy dancing with Kelly and provocatively asks if he wants to sleep with her. Vic replies that it's not what she thinks. Jealous, Melinda performs a sexual act on him while he's driving, asking if he thinks Kelly is good in bed. When Vic doesn't respond, she hurts him. He protests, saying they could get into an accident, but Melinda retorts that if he wants Kelly more than her, she doesn't mind if they both die. When they arrive home, Vic and Melinda become intimate. The next day, the couple watches their daughter play soccer. Vic gets a call from the bank, informing him that Melinda's account has insufficient funds to cover a $3,000 check issued to Charlie Delisle for piano lessons. Suspicious, Vic contacts various places and discovers that Charlie will be performing at the Oak Tree Lounge. At the lounge, Vic observes Charlie playing the piano. Melinda arrives and sits near Charlie, unaware that Vic is there, confirming his suspicions. When Vic gets home, he sees Melinda's wedding ring by the sink and hears news that Martin's body was found, shot to death. Later, Melinda returns home, claiming she had dinner with a new friend she thinks Vic will like. Vic turns serious and informs her that Martin was found. Melinda is surprised, but Vic apologizes, though she doubts his sincerity. The next day, Vic and Trixie adopt a dog. On their way home, Trixie asks about her mother, and Vic reassures her that she's just sad about a friend's passing. While driving, Vic spots Charlie walking with flowers. At home, Vic sees the same flowers on their table and angrily throws them away. Determined to learn more about Charlie, he goes to the Oak Tree Lounge with Grant, revealing that Charlie gives Melissa piano lessons. Grant immediately understands the implication. Back home, Vic tries to relax at his snail farm, but he can't stop imagining Melinda with Charlie. The next day, Vic pours coffee for his wife, only to find her bed empty. Melinda sneaks back home, and Vic demands to know why she didn't come home last night and why she issued a check to Charlie. She dodges his questions, so Vic presses her. Melinda comments that he's finally showing some emotion and dares him to ask directly what she's doing with Charlie. Vic reminds her they have a daughter, but Melinda retorts that it was his decision to have one. He insists she stop seeing Charlie. Unfazed, Melinda dares him to divorce her, but he refuses, insisting she must listen to him. Teasing his sudden assertiveness, Melinda starts flirting with him, assuming he can't make love to her because that requires passion. He angrily declares that he does love her. When asked if she's in love with Charlie, Melinda remarks that if Vic were married to someone else, he'd be so bored he'd kill himself. Soon, the couple attends a pool party where Charlie is invited. Melinda eagerly introduces him to everyone and urges him to play a song on the piano. While everyone dances, Melinda rubs herself against her husband. Later, she introduces Vic to Charlie, and when asked if they've met before, Vic denies it. That night, Vic finds Melinda and Charlie sneaking out to the pool. He follows them and quietly watches them swim and have fun. As rain starts to fall, everyone goes inside, leaving Vic and Charlie at the pool. Vic ensures no one's watching before turning his attention to Charlie. 
Later, Vic goes inside the house, having changed clothes. Melinda starts looking for Charlie and screams upon finding him floating in the pool. The men lift him but accidentally drop him, causing Charlie to hit his head on the floor. Vic performs CPR, but a hysterical Melinda screams that he's not doing it right. She yells at a friend who accidentally hits her, prompting her to be taken inside. Moments later, Deputy Clark interrogates them, and Grant explains that he and Vic were the last to leave the pool. Suddenly, Melinda accuses Vic of killing Charlie. Chief Nichols decides to gather everyone's accounts to understand what happened. He soon interrogates Vic privately. Vic claims he doesn't know if Melinda slept with Charlie and declares that he loves her for who she is, so he doesn't question her about such things. When asked if he killed Charlie, Vic calmly says no and explains that Charlie was still alive when he and Grant left. On the way home, Melinda cries and slaps Vic, devastated by what happened to Charlie. When they arrive home, Vic confronts Melinda, asking if she wants a divorce, and adds that she should be afraid of him if she thinks he killed Charlie. However, Melinda confidently denies it, claiming she was the one he killed for. The next day, Vic goes for a bike ride, haunted by memories of what he did to Charlie. While biking, he notices a car tailing him. After sending Trixie off to school, Kelly approaches Vic, revealing that Don believes he killed Charlie and has shared his theories with Melinda. Consequently, Vic invites Don and Melinda over for dinner. The Wilsons arrive at the couple's home. At his snail farm, Vic warns Don to stop spreading accusations, insisting Charlie's death in the pool was accidental. Don remains suspicious, suggesting Vic drowned Charlie, and finds it odd that Vic seemed to take pleasure in confessing to Martin's murder. Vic then approaches Don menacingly with a power drill, but uses it to fix the ceiling instead. Don challenges Vic to take a lie detector test, which Vic agrees to. The next day, Vic spots the same car that was following him, now parked near a restaurant. Inside the car is a camera, confirming his suspicion that he is being investigated. He enters the restaurant and joins Melinda at her table. Melinda introduces him to a psychotherapist named David. In response, Vic jokes that Melinda has schizophrenia, but David dismisses the remark. Still suspicious, Vic excuses himself but asks David for a business card, which David doesn't have. Days later, Vic barges into Don's house, confronting him about David and accusing him of hiring David as a private investigator. Vic shows a bank record of Melinda transferring money to Don's account, angering Kelly, who apologizes to Vic. Don, however, demands that his wife not apologize to a man like Vic. Not long after, Vic sees Melinda with a man named Tony Cameron and follows them, aware of his wife's actions. Back home, Trixie asks Vic what it was like to drown Charlie, but he denies it. Trixie shares that everyone asked her how Vic did it, prompting Vic to remind her that he would be in prison for life if he had killed Charlie. Despite this, Trixie is convinced her father did it, and Vic asks her to keep it between them. Later, Vic overhears Melinda talking to someone inviting her to Brazil. She assures the caller that Trixie would get used to it and tells the person she loves him, which angers Vic. The next day, Vic confronts Melinda about her night, but she refuses to talk to him. Later, Tony greets Vic at his snail farm, there to meet Melinda. While waiting in the kitchen, Tony tells Vic he creates sustainable living spaces for the next generation. Melinda greets Tony and reveals he's her ex, assuring Tony that Vic doesn't care about that. Tony sympathizes with Vic, knowing Melinda is difficult to control, but adds that it's what makes her special. When discussing food, Tony suggests adding snails to the dish, but Vic says they aren't for eating. Tony insists, so Vic reveals that snails need to be starved before eating to remove the poison. After dinner, Vic quietly tidies up while Melinda and Tony enjoy each other's company. Seething with quiet rage, Vic watches them head up to Melinda's room. One day, Vic drives up to Tony and tells him that Melinda wants him to see a building site. Hesitantly, Tony gets in the car. Vic carelessly drives to a remote forest trail. When they arrive, Tony searches for Melinda, but when he turns around, Vic throws a rock at his head. Seeing blood, Tony apologizes and pleads for his life, but Vic throws another rock, making him fall off the cliff. With him dead, Vic pulls Tony into the gorge. He takes Tony's wallet and ties him to a rock before submerging him in the water. Vic soon arrives home and talks to Melinda about Tony as if nothing happened. At the dinner table, Vic toasts with Trixie to celebrate life. When Melinda starts worrying about Tony, Vic claims that he hasn't seen him. As everything proceeds smoothly, Vic prepares photographs in his office. When he meets with his family, 
Trixie announces that they're going on a picnic to the gorge. During their picnic, Melinda contemplates why Vic is the only man who wants to stay with her. She then lets him touch her, initiating intimacy. Showing his appreciation for his wife, Vic hands her an album of her photographs. This makes Melinda happy, and she kisses him. When Vic hears Trixie, he goes to check on her. As Trixie heads back to her mother, Vic spots Tony's corpse emerging from the water. On the way home, Melinda realizes she left her scarf behind, so Vic promises to get it tomorrow. That night, Melinda invites Vic to sleep in her room. While in bed, Melinda speaks affectionately, which leads to intimacy. The next morning, Vic rushes to the gorge. Meanwhile, Melinda looks for Vic at his snail farm and finds Tony's wallet. At the gorge, Vic uses a stick to submerge Tony's corpse. To his surprise, Don sees him and Vic excuses himself, saying he's searching for Melinda's scarf. But Don has found it. Suddenly, Tony's corpse surfaces, and Don rushes to his car. Vic chases after him on his bike and eventually takes a shortcut. At home, Melinda, upset by Vic's behavior, starts packing her things. However, Trixie takes her mother's luggage and throws it in the pool, refusing to leave. In the forest, Don reaches for his phone while driving to text his wife. Vic stumbles onto the road, causing Don to instinctively turn the wheel. This leads Don to go off the cliff and die in the crash. Relieved, Vic leaves. When he arrives home, Melinda stares at him. Before heading upstairs, she calmly claims that she saw Tony. Afterward, Melinda burns Tony's belongings, choosing to live with her husband and his secret. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.